Hey, what is going on guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here. It's playing the eight game NBA main slate on Tuesday. Before I get into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL slates on DraftKings. If you're unable to watch these videos, I also upload on Apple Podcasts. Link is down below. It's called the DK DFS Show. If you have an extra minute or two, if you could leave a five-star rating and review there, that would really, really help me out. Um, if you're interested in signing up for premium content, two different packages on Patreon.com, NBA, NFL. We cover the main and the showdown slates. The sponsor of this video is Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a player prop site, guys, where you can mix and match sports, uh, pick two to five players and win up to 10x your money. Again, you're you're uh, putting money on player props. Either uh, you know you can take over under on fancy points for NBA. You can take over on under on straight up points, rebounds, assists for NFL. You can take over unders on passing yards, rushing yards, receiving yards. A ton of different ways you can play. They have basically every single sport you can think of. College sports as well. So if you guys want to try it out, make sure to sign up and use my code DKDFS. It is. DKDFS, all one word, you get a 100% match up to $100. Basically, you deposit using my code $100, you get a free $100 to play with on this site. All right, guys, so uh, let's take a look back at my lineup here from tonight. So tonight, well, it could have been a massive night, could have been a massive night, but random blowout in the game that I stacked. I'm in, I'm in quite a bit of pain, quite a bit of pain. Um, also I, a guy that I was really high end that I ended up, I just couldn't find a way to get him in because like every single scenario was like me leaving a thousand dollars on the table is not so little. Um, like I was messing around with a ton of different combinations like Jalen Brown in here instead of Brunson. And then I had like Derek white in here, but then like every single time I had like not little with like the combo, like a two B two swap. Like there's nothing I could have like uh, went to that made sense. So I ended up spending up a little more for Nance, um, who came into much less ownership. He was fine, but like again, blowout hurt him, and Little is the one that smashed. Um, so that one hurt a little bit. Also, Javel McGee is just like whenever whenever I play him, whenever he's a clear value, it's just an automatic foul trouble no matter what right you guys remember i'm sure a month ago when Aiton was out and i played i played a relatively low in mcgee like for like two weeks straight and every single time he got in foul trouble and when i finally faded him he went for 50 fancy points um yeah javel mcgee and me do not have a good relationship right now um but yeah going over the rest of my lineups i was surprised pritchard was only like 38 percent owned i thought he was going to be the chalk of the chalk um but yeah i'll take that all day long brunson and porzingis both low owned both smashing, especially especially Porzingis blowout. Porzingis is on pace for seventy plus. Brunson on pace for forty plus and uh, blowout. So it hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. McDaniel's was the piece. So I originally had little in here again. I was messing uh, messing around with like two v twos and like I just had extra salary, so I went up to McDaniel's. Um, and again, he was fine, but like little is the guy I really wanted here. Um, Nathan Knight, sixty five percent ownership. He was an absolute absolute smash uh yeah harden was the chalk of the chalk as he should have been no surprise there at all don't spend time there and again mcgee was the absolute chalk and just gets a massive foul trouble so again my pairing of brunson porzingis nance in that game stack dallas portland uh probably would be taking this down to the game state competitive so uh yeah the pain the pain is real guys i'm not gonna lie but let's go over some uh owner or let's go over lineups in the higher stake stuff this was in the thunderdome only a six-man tournament uh, it's a $5,000 entry. So the winning lineup here, Harden, White, Brown, who I was very high into, Derek White, um, Little, Knight, Pritchard, Powell, and McGee. So uh, you'll see 100% owned JaVale McGee, 100% owned Pritchard here. So like Pritchard's only 38% mine, but 100% in this one. Nathan Knight, only 50%. Little was 66%, a guy I liked a lot. Brown was 83%. Um, again, I went to Porzingis for lower ownership, even though I did like Jalen Brown a decent amount. Um, white was, was pretty low owned. Let's see. What was some other ownership? Um, anything else that stood out to me? Lamella ball was, was the next highest owned spend up. Um, not I did get a little bit lucky there with the blowout. Um, Charlotte just wiped the court with Houston. Now, one thing I was kind of surprised with was the ownership on Josh Christopher. Like I was talking about at Patreon. I was like, oh yeah, you can go to some of these rocker starters for, you know, uh, for GPPs for lower ownership. And then like, I'm looking at ownership when it was locked and he's like 40% owned. So every once in a while, again, I don't look at ownership, but every once in a while ownership surprises me. That was one that surprised me that Christopher was like 40% in my tournament. Um, I don't think like he was bad play discarding ownership, but should he have been 40% owned? Absolutely not. With all the other value on the slate, um, that did surprise me that the Christopher ownership. 
Um, and then this is the winning lineup in the Hall of Famer. This is a $2,000 entry. So it's Pritchard, Ball, uh, Brown, Little, Knight, Harden, Ingles, and JaVale McGee. Okay, so, oh, real quick, guys. Again, if you enjoyed the free content, if you enjoyed these videos and the live streams, again, thank you to everyone who checked out the live stream today. Um, just make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and the notification bell so you do know when I upload and go live. So let's first start off with Milwaukee and Orlando. So this game has massive blowout rest. Let's see, do we have any of the biggest odds up for these NBA games? Let me refresh Bavada and see if we have any of these up yet. Uh, let's see. Um, Doesn't look like it, but... Um, if I had to guess, like Milwaukee is probably close to 20 point favorites in this one with a basically fully healthy team against the G League of the Orlando Magic. Um, yeah, I, I have a hard time seeing this game stay competitive. So I think the ownership will be low on all these bucks. But if if it's a miracle and somehow Orlando can keep this game competitive, you could see Giannis smash and I think pretty low ownership. Holiday and Middleton are pretty too pricey. Same with Bobby Portis. Uh, Cousins still started, but he's going to be splitting time with uh, Portis and only put 17 minutes last game. So there's really nothing else on the Milwaukee side. But could you take a dart and like, like a Jordan Nawara and hope he gets all the blowout run or something like that? I just think it's getting too cute. There's too many other good value players I, I would go to. So like... I don't even think I would consider that. On the Magic side, so again, one's really shorthanded. No Cole Anthony, no Bamba, no Kiki, no Suggs, no Fultz, no Ross, no MCW, no Johnson, no Mulder. So um, yeah, if they want to, if they want any, sh so I'm, let me try to think what the starting line should be. So I'm guessing it's going to be Carter Jr., Wagner, Gary Harris, Robin Lopez, and Gravit. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I could be mispronouncing Asani's name. Gravit, Gravit. I don't. know. Whatever. Um, that's what I think is going to be the starting lineup. But um, so I'll start with Carr Jr. and Wagner again. If you're targeting a guy like Giannis Antetokounmpo, then you can maybe run it back with one of these two Magic studs because if they want any chance to keep the game competitive, it's going to be because of them. But again, I have a really hard time seeing this game stay close. Gary Harris at 5K should play big minutes if the game stays competitive, but his price is up a bit. Robin Lopez at 4 3, I think, is a fair value if he does start. We'll just keep an eye on what they end up doing with the starting lineup. And then, yeah, Hassani Gravit, you know, played 33 minutes last game. I think he's an interesting value play. The um, the like the cheap end guys I think are intriguing in large field tournaments. If this game does end up blowing out, um, you know maybe like a, a Bras Degas uh, could play big minutes if the game blows out. Um, you do have Mo Wagner coming back and, and a guy like R.J. Hampton at three point two k. Now um, keep an eye on the starting lineup here for the Magic. I forget did he start that last game against the Magic? That wasn't I think that was an early game, so I wasn't paying attention to that one, but like. I'll have to go back and look. But, uh, yeah, if RJ Hampton starts at 3-2, he would probably be the guy I would look to um, for Orlando because, let's see. Um, yeah, they signed Gravito a second attendant contract. Okay, so, um, yeah, I guess RJ probably my favorite play on the Magic. Um, all right, let's move on to Washington, Miami. So, Washington, the big news is Brad Beal. Questionable. So, um, if Brad Beal is in, there's really not much I like on, on the Washington Wizards. If Brad Beal's out, then we can look to Dinwiddie and Kuzma. Um, Dinwiddie at 6'8", should play mid-30s minutes and would lead the offense. And the Kuzma would be the number two in offense, also should play low-30s minutes. So those two would be viable, even in a tougher spot. The two centers in Harrell and Gafford are always in play for tournaments, but no, they, they're they never really going to stand out to me. Um, you know, a guy like Corey Kispert, if Brad Beal misses, probably plays big minutes, but he's also very, very reliant on the scoring. Denny's 4'4", he's been playing a little bit more of late. Again, a fair value play, but like, there's just other teams that are more shorthanded that I think are going to look better. Moving on to Miami. So, still uh, no BAM. Kyle Lowry's out for this one. We'll do a Jimmy Butler back. And his first game back, he played 35 minutes. So, no limitations here on Jimmy. I think he's a relatively safe spend up if you have the salary there. Tyler Hero at 6'8". So, um, they've kind of been taking it easy on his minutes. He also got ejected last game. But um, we'll see if they do the starting lineup. If he starts at the point guard, I really like him at 6'8". Even if it comes with the bench, he looks decent. Um, Gabe Vincent at 5'7". Should start and play low 30s minutes. I think he's a fair play there in the mid-range. Struss and Robinson, a little bit too pricey for me um, with, uh, you know, their, them both them being kind of score independent. And then the GOAT, Omer GOAT7, guys, uh, finally getting some run. He played 33 minutes last game, uh, went for 37 fans points. He's a really good point per minute guy. I think he looks good for value again with Bam out, with Deadman out. They also dusted off uh, Hassan, or <laughs> 
Udonis Haslam for uh, some backup run. He went for 17 fancy points in 11 minutes, but uh, that's not something I'm going to really consider on this one. Philadelphia and Toronto. So Joel Embiid at 12-1, I think is a decent contrarian spend up. Uh, he's been playing pretty well of late and like Toronto is really thin. So like he should be able to feast on whoever they throw on him. Um, so Embiid, I think is a good contrarian spend up there. Tobias feels a little bit too pricey. And then like the rest of Philadelphia, there's no one that really stands out. Like Curry and Maxi both feel priced about right. Thibel at 3.6K probably sees close to 30 minutes, but there's just so many other value plays in the slate that I don't think we have to go there on the Toronto side. So here we go. All right, Siakam, Gary Trent might be coming back for this one. Ken Birch is also uh, questionable. So those three could come back, which would definitely change things for Toronto. Like last game, they only had eight healthy bodies and they had to run out a lot of like G leaguers. So um, they might be more healthy in this game. Really, we just had to keep an eye on the news, right? If everyone that was questionable is out again, then like Boucher, Watanabe, Steve Mikhailu going to lead this offense. And then you'd have value guys like DJ Wilson, those G leaguers. Banton, for some reason, I'm still tilted about this. All right, let me tilt about this one more time. Eight man rotation last game. Sure, it was a blowout. How does Banton play the least out of anyone? Your rookie point guard, you mean to tell me that he plays the least? I just, I still can't get over that. I, I still cannot get over that. But um, yeah, this one's really hard to say right now. Again, if all the questionable guys are out, then we're looking, it's kind of the same situation as last slate. If all these questionable guys are in, like Siakam's in, Gary Trent Jr.'s in, Ken Birch is in, well, then I like the guys that are going to end up playing in like, like a Siakam, like a Gary Trent Jr. Um, still would have some interest in some of these value options depending on what they do with the starting lineup. So really hard to say with Toronto right now. Moving on to the Lakers, LeBron, Westbrook, both in a good spot here against Houston. Um, you know, the Lakers have really been struggling of late, so I could see Houston keeping this game competitive. So like both Lakers stars look good in LeBron and in Westbrook. I do prefer LeBron, I think it's a little bit of a higher floor. AD out, Bazemore out, Rondo out, Ariza out. Um, they've been messing with the rotation for the bigs. Like some games, Roy Howard's playing 20 minutes. Others, he's getting a DNP. So I don't really trust that. Uh, THT at 5'8", feels priced about right. Carmelo at 4'9", again, probably plays 30-ish minutes. He had a big game last game, but kind of an outlier. I think he's more of a tournament option. Malik Monk in his first game back played 35 minutes. Um, I think he's a decent contrarian value play, but... Um, I don't think I'm going to consider anyone else in the Lakers. Moving on to Houston. So we'll keep on KPJ, Jalen Green news. Um, if those two are out, then it's going to be a similar situation of, you know, the starters are going to look decent if they can keep the game competitive. The game tonight would turn into a massive blowout. So none of these guys got a huge run. But Christian Wood is 8.5K. They don't know the stats up yet, but he did not play a minute in the fourth quarter. Um, if they want any chance of keeping the game competitive, it's probably going to be a big game here from Christian Wood. Um, and then guys like Eric Gordon, Armani Brooks, Josh Christopher would all look, even David Nawaba, like that was their starting lineup. The starters would look good if you, if you think Houston keep the game competitive. Like Nawaba, Christopher, Brooks, Gordon, and even Wood, I think would all probably push for 30 minutes. So um, those four guys look pretty decent. Um, and then, yeah, for some reason, again, they just don't want to play Sengen big minutes. It's so, so frustrating. Um, so yeah, the big news there is Green and Porter. If they're both in, then it kind of takes the Houston value out of play for me. Knicks in Minnesota, Julius Randle right now, nothing more than a contrarian spend up. He has yet to pay off his salary for like the last three weeks. Burks like, moved back to the bench and only put 18 minutes. So um, I think he could be the worst play on the slate and it's not even close. Uh, Kemba Walker. So here's a tricky one. He's 6.9K. He's been absolutely smashing last four games. 43, 41, 70, and 45 fancy points. Been stuff in the stat sheet. Almost a triple-double last couple games. Minnesota, not scared of them defensively with like everyone out. So... I do like Kemba. The only issue is now you have quickly back. You had RJ Barrett coming back, right? Who, who had missed the last few games. Um, he's, you know, they kind of taking it easy on his minutes. First couple games or first game back, he played 26 minutes. But um, yeah, now you're just going to have a couple more bodies in the rotation. So the minutes are a little bit less secure for a guy like Kemba. But I still think he starts, right? I still think he's going to start. I don't think he plays 40 minutes. Maybe instead of the 40 minutes, he goes down to like low to mid 30s. I think it's a fair guess with, you know, Barrett, he's getting his... Uh, easing his way back in the rotation with Emmanuel quickly back. So um, I still like Kemba. My only concern with him is, again, minutes might go down a bit. I think the ownership is going to be pretty inflated after the last four games. But, yeah, hard to deny what he's been doing. Fournier at almost 6K with, you know, more bodies getting healthy. It's just a contrarian option. He has to hit his shots to get value. Quickly himself at 5K, I'll probably pass in his first game back. Um, as far as the centers go, like Mitchell Robinson at 4.9 um, feels a little bit too pricey for me. That's probably it for the Knicks. 
All right, now we got to talk about Minnesota. So this is a team that is going to be extremely shorthanded. We'll keep an eye if anyone gets uh, removed from the health and safety protocols. But right now, Towns, Dilo, Edwards, Vanderbilt, Nas Reed, all out with Pat Beverly questionable. Um, he did not play the game tonight. So we'll start with Malik Bleasley at 5.4K. Uh, did not have his best shooting game tonight, but like he also shot, I think, close to 20 times. Like He's going to be one of the higher, higher usage players uh, on this team, and his price came down a bit. So I really like Beasley if all these questionable players are out again. McDaniels is going to play huge, huge minutes. I think he's a pretty safe play. A guy that can get it done in a ton of different ways. You and Noel play big minutes off the bench. Um, you know He's a guy that, when he's on the court, usually pretty productive, so I like him for value. They started McLaughlin, uh, who played some solid minutes. He's a guy that can stuff a stash. I think he looks really good for value. Okoji started, but only played, I think, like 15 minutes. So not a ton of interest there in Okoji. Lehman played like mid-20s minutes on the bench. I think he's a fair value. Um, Nathan Knight, for some reason, uh, price went down a bit. He went absolutely off. Uh, yeah, he's a guy I like. Again, saw what he did in the summer league uh, in limited action for the Hawks last year. He's a good point for a guy. So um, I really like Nathan Knight once again. And we got So they didn't have Greg Monroe in the player pool, which was a little bit mad about because I was going to consider him as a contrarian option. Um, they, don't, they still do not have Greg Monroe in the player pool. So see if they add Greg Monroe. If they do end up adding Greg Monroe and he's like min price, I think you can definitely go to him because he's playing the backup five. Um, they even played a little bit alongside each other. I saw Nathan Knight and Greg Monroe playing alongside each other. So uh, keep an eye on that if, if Greg Monroe gets added but because he would be another value in play for um, the Timberwolves. But yeah, um, they are a team that looks great right now, assuming everyone that missed the game tonight misses again. Cleveland and the Pelicans. So Darius Garland at almost 10K is just too pricey. I know he's having a really good year, but I'm just not paying this price point for him. Now, Kevin Love, so... He started last game, which was a little bit surprised. Only played 18 minutes, though. It was a massive, massive blowout. Now, we know Love has not been playing big minutes this year. But, um, you know, the question is, what? how many minutes would he have played if the game would have stayed competitive? Would he have played, you know, closer to 30? Would he have only played, like, low 20s? So, you know, Love, uh, if he starts again, I think he's a solid option. Um, I'm just a little bit curious, you know, how many minutes he ends up playing um, you know, is it low to mid twenties? Is it high? Like if Kevin Love pushes for 30 minutes tonight or tomorrow, he's going to look fantastic. Ricky Rubio at six, four, but starting last couple games, did only play 23 minutes last game. Um, but assuming he starts again, I think he's a decent play there. Lori Markin has really taken a step back recently. Um, he is someone I'm not really considering and Sexton obviously out for the year. Osmond out. Um, probably not going to get to anyone else like Dean Wade at three, eight, um, you know, plays should get like mid twenties minutes. I guess he's an okay value option. Denzel Valentine is probably going to be in the rotation too, but main interest definitely going to be the starters there. And on the Pelican side, another team where we can definitely get some value. So Brandon Ingram, doubtful. Jonas Valanciunas is probable, most likely coming back. And then you have Josh Hart, who was questionable, has been playing uh, out of his mind recently. Um, and you have NAW still in the protocol. So if Ingram, Josh Hart miss, this is an extremely shorthanded team. So we'll start Jonas Valanciunas at 9-7 in his first game back from the illness. Um, I think he's a good contrarian spend up if there's no Ingram and Hart. Because you just got to look at that roster. It's like, all right, if Ingram and Hart misses, where is offense coming from from this team outside of like JV and Devontae Graham? I have no idea. So like Jonas Valanciunas, even at that price, not cash in play, but I like him for tournaments if uh, you know Ingram and Hart are out. Um, again, I don't expect Ingram to play. If Hart ends up playing at 7-3, I think he's a solid option in the mid-range because he's him and JV are going to lead this offense, and Hart's been phenomenal. Devonta Graham at 6K, so we'll like him a lot more if um, Josh Hart is out because then Devonta Graham is going to have to do a lot more offensively. So monitor the status there. Hernan Gomez is out of play for me with JV back. I don't think they're going to start two centers alongside each other. Not gonna, it's not going to be like the Pistons of old, the twin tower days of Greg Monroe and uh, uh, Pistons legend Greg Monroe and Andre drummond uh what a what a lineup that was but yeah if josh hart and ingram are both out then like you're gonna have some value guys in play here like a herbert jones of 4k who probably has to do a lot more on the offensive end he's a good defensive player but he would be relied on a lot more offensively garrett temple i still have no idea why he's on this roster but he would probably play huge mitts and make for a good value play um you know the fringe guys like sadaransky murphy they probably get some decent run too. Um, but yeah, Pelicans, it's it's uh, pretty important to keep an eye on the news of Ingram and of Josh Hart. A couple games left, Denver, Golden State. So this one should be a good one. Nicole Jokic, 12th. We got Jokic versus Steph Curry. Uh, hopefully this game stays competitive because this is a game I do want to watch. Um, 
yeah, the one spot Golden State has been struggling this year has been against the big. So, like, Jokic, um, even at this price point, I think makes for a great spend-up, right? As long as the game stays competitive, um, Jokic could absolutely smash here. Gordon missed last couple games, but doesn't do a ton for me. Morris probable. Barton feels priced about right. Uh, you know, Austin Rivers started the last game puke. I just, I'm not playing Austin Rivers on the slate. There's just no way. Jeff Green probably sees more run too, but again, it's Jeff Green. There's, you don't have to go to these Denver value options when you have other teams that are extremely shorthanded. Like if I was to take a shot on one guy, probably would be Campazzo. Um, did only play 17 minutes last game. That was because of massive foul trouble. Previous games, he's been playing like closer to that 30 minute mark. So he would be the one value I'd probably consider. Devon Reed also saw uh, 26 minutes last game, but I don't necessarily trust him to get those minutes again. So it's really kind of Jokic for me, and that's it. On the Golden State side, so Steph Curry, 11-5. I think it makes for a decent contrarian spend-up. Um, been playing a little bit better of late. 63 and 57 fantasy points last couple of games. So I like Steph, but again, more of just a tournament play because we know the floor is there. They originally said Jordan Poole's in, and now they're saying he's out. We'll see. We'll keep an eye on the status there. Wiggins at 6'8 is now back, so that's going to take uh, or hurt the value here for Golden State. Um, a guy I've been preaching all year, I think, is very underrated since the beginning of the preseason, Otto Porter Jr. Uh, finally got to show off what he could do last couple, three games, 39, 20, and 29 minutes. Again, the first game of the season, I was extremely tilting how he was basically out of the rotation. They were playing Dusty Iguodala. Imagine playing the Dust of Iguodala over Otto Porter Jr., who's actually a really solid player and should, would be starting on like almost every sing, any other uh, NBA team. So... Um, yeah, Otto Porter Jr. with Wiggins back probably moves to the bench unless they, I don't think like Gary Payton would move to the bench. Um, so yeah, Otto Porter would not look as good uh, if he moves to the bench. Gary Payton of 5K has been starting 33 and 30 minutes. I think he's a fair option, but probably not necessary on the slate. The value here for Golden State, it's just not necessary to go there, again, with other teams way more shorthanded. And finally, the Thunder and the Kings. What a late night hammer this is. Ugh. Shea Gildas Alexander, 9-5. It's a great spot. I mean, he's played really well of late, but right now it's just a contrarian option. Should play big, big minutes, though. Giddy is too expensive at 7-6. Lou Dort feels priced about right. We do have no Baisley, Robinson, Earl, uh, Pokashevsky all out. So we'll see what they do with the starting lineup. Maybe a guy like Kenneth Williams sees more run. If he ends up picking up a starter out of some interest in him, like they probably start Derek Favors the 5. Um, with no Robinson, Earl, they're a little bit thinner in the front court. It's like him and Mike Muscala probably split the center minutes. Um, but yeah, not, not a ton. I'm super, uh, interested in the Thunder side. And finally the Sacramento Kings. So not much like Darren Fox is now back. A lot of these guys are priced up when Fox is out. So like Halburn still had a decent game with Fox in, but at almost nine K, I'm just not paying that price for him. I'm not touching Fox. Uh, Harrison Barnes and Buddy Heald are too expensive. The only, the only guy I would consider here as a con- super contrarian option is Rashawn Holmes. So first game back only played 17 minutes. Um, I think it was because they were kind of easing him back into it. But this game against Memphis, he got in massive foul trouble and only played 13. So, like, maybe he goes back to his 30-ish minutes. Um, so, I think he's, again, an interesting flyer in large field tournaments. But not much else here on the Sacramento side that I'm liking. So, yeah, guys, that will do it for the video. Again, if you have been enjoying the YouTube content, just make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Really helps me out, guys. goes a long way. So, thanks again. Have a great night. Uh, I will be doing a YouTube live stream tomorrow, so make sure to check that one out, guys, Q&A style. Um, And, yeah, have a good rest of your night.